Welcome to Bible Track Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracks, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. How do you do, my friend? Welcome to the broadcast today. It's a delight to have you here. Thanks for letting me be part of your day. My Bible's sending open again to the book of 2 Peter in chapter 1. 2 Peter 1, if it is at all possible right now, reach over, pick up your own copy of the Word of God and join me there. 2 Peter chapter 1, I'm going to begin to read at verse 12 here in just a moment. Along with your Bible, if you can get something on which you can jot some notes, I'm going to be giving uh, an outline of sorts today about our verses, but also with that pen and paper handy, you'll be able to jot down our contact information. I want to give you a free gift of some gospel tracts. I'm going to talk about one right uh, in a moment. It's entitled, I'm Keeping the Ten Commandments. But let me lead into our Bible study time this way. Recently, I was preaching in the city of Chillicothe, Illinois, and I used the passage that's before us today for my message. And I said, in essence, that Peter was giving his eulogy. Well, there were some older elementary kiddos that were there part of the morning service. My thought was that these young people probably did not know what a eulogy was, so I explained it this way. I said a eulogy is a, a something done at a funeral and it's where somebody gets up and tells some lies about the person who has passed away. Well, immediately all the adults chuckled. They understood exactly what I was saying, but the poor kids were puzzled. So I explained to them that a eulogy is when people tell the good deeds and life qualities of the person who has passed away. And then I said, Sometimes we make the person who has passed away sound a whole lot better than they really were in life. Well, our verses here today, uh, it's where Peter tells us what he is planning to do, what he is doing while he is yet alive, doing it so that after he is dead, that the people are going to remember that Peter did this one thing over and over again. Peter was, in essence, planning his own eulogy. So tell me, just what are you and I doing that people will talk about at our funeral that we really want them to talk about. Get your Bible and join me with pen and paper. I told you about this gospel tract, I'm Keeping the Ten Commandments. Now, beloved, a gospel tract is simply an evangelism tool. It's a short written presentation of the gospel based upon the Bible, not man's idea, God's idea. Salvation is through the person of Jesus Christ. That's why he died on the cross, shed his blood, was buried and rose again, that you and I, through his merits, can be saved from our sin. This track, I'm Keeping the Ten Commandments, brings the gospel to people who have a false hope. Many people think if I live a moral life, if I do the Ten Commandments, well, if I do most of them and my good deeds outweigh my bad deeds, then God will let me into heaven. I understand the thought, but it's a false thought. It's a myth. It's a lie. Satan is the father of lies, and he's caused a lot of people to believe in this lie. This track, I'm Keeping the Ten Commandments, lays out why the Ten Commandments were given. They were not given to make us good. They were to show us why we need a Savior. I'm Keeping the Ten Commandments is a tremendous tool that you can use in sharing the gospel with others. 
Now, beloved, at the end of this program, my announcer is going to come back on. He's going to be giving to you three ways by which you can give to us your name and your mailing address. Jot down the method that works best for you. Give us your name and your mailing address. We'll send you a free sample packet containing one each of all of our English gospel tracks, including this one. Please do that today. If you can't wait to the end of the program, just go to our website, which is www.bibletracksinc.org. That word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S, bibletracksinc.org. If your Bible's open to 2 Peter chapter 1, beginning at verse 12, the Bible says this, Wherefore, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though ye know them, and be established in the present truth. Yea, I think it meet, as long as I am in this tabernacle, to stir you up by putting you in remembrance, knowing that shortly I must put off this my tabernacle, even as our Lord Jesus Christ hath showed me. Moreover, I will endeavor that ye may be able after my deceased to have these things always in remembrance. Stop there, if you would. Now, chapter one of Second Peter is uh, all about leading us to these verses here. It begins in verses one and two, talking about that every believer has the same precious faith, that they're all made righteous the same way. They all have the same righteous status because of the righteousness of Christ. In this way, all believers are equal. Peter then begins in verse 3 to say that we are all saved to head to the same goals, the goal of glory and virtue. But how do we reach the goal of glory and virtue? Well, that's the point of verses 5 through 7. You see, you and I are to actively participate with God in adding to or supplying on top of our salvation the qualities of Christ mentioned in verses 5 to 7. As we do this adding, we become fruitful for Christ. That's what verse 8 says. But verse 9 says, if we are not adding these things onto our spiritual lives, then we end up spiritually myopic. We end up not being able to see eternal things well at all. But Peter wants all saints to be productive, to reach glory and virtue. So he does in verses 10 and 11, he challenges us to put on, put all of our energy into the process of growing into Christ's likeness. Now, if we do this, he says, we'll have a tremendous and abundant entrance into heaven. That, my friend, is the short synopsis of verses 1 through 11. And we needed that to understand the first word of verse 12. The first word is wherefore, or because I want you to grow and be productive and have an abundant entrance into heaven, he says, because of that, Peter will not neglect. He's not going to stop to keep reminding the saints about their salvation, about their need to grow, and about their future in heaven. To that end, he makes these points. First point is this, jot it down. It's the what. It is the what. What is Peter planning to do? Verse 12 tells us he plans to not stop telling the saints of their need to grow and why they need to grow. That's the what. But then, number two, the who, the who, who needed to be reminded that they needed to continue to grow. Well, verse 12 gives us the answer. You're going to find that word established there. The word established, Peter was talking to established or mature believers. This word established refers to people who have been grounded in truth or To put it another way, these are people whose lives have been propped up and stabilized over time by the truth of the Word of God. But why in the world do mature believers need to be nudged by Peter into more growth? Well, for that answer, we have to look at verse 13. There, Peter says, that he planned as long as he was alive in his tabernacle, in his body, to, look at the words, stir up 
these mature saints. Now, those words stir up basically mean to wake up a sleeping person. Now, Peter was not talking about waking up believers who were sleeping in church. He was talking about mature saints who had grown satisfied as to where they were spiritually. They were content that they had matured enough so that now they could basically coast in their walk with Christ. They were no longer pushing the limits of growth to become more and more like Christ. In short, they had stopped growing. Okay, we've talked about the what and the who, but now let's talk about the why. Why was Peter going to continue challenging believers who were already mature to keep on growing? Well, again, verse 13 says that this was meat It means it was right. It's the right thing to do. Challenging one another in our walk with Christ is the right thing to do. A whole lot of people know about Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25, where their believers are challenged to be in church. That's a right use of that verse. But they forget what verse 24 says. Hebrews 10, 24 tells us why we need to be in church. The church is a place where we consider one another. We look at each other. We want to help each other. We want to provoke or urge one another to greater love and greater working out of our walk with Christ. Here, here is the challenge that you and I need to deal with in light of our verses out of 2 Peter 1, verses 12 to 15. We've got to ask, number one, are you, am I, a mature believer? If we are not, then we must ask, what are you and I actively doing to become mature? But next, if you and I are a mature believer, have you and I become drowsy in our spiritual life? Have you and I stopped actively pursuing more growth in Christ's likeness? Have we become complacent and sleepy in our development? There's an old saying that I know you know. It goes like this. You can take a horse to water, but what? (laughs) You cannot make it drink. You can take a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. Friend, I can bring you to these verses. I can bring myself to these verses, but what I cannot do, I cannot make you drink from them, and I cannot make you desire to grow. All I can deal with is myself. If you and I have no desire to grow, then we have a serious spiritual disease. It's talked about back in verse 9. We have an eye problem. We're going to stumble and fall and doubt. So let me ask in a very practical way. You and I who know Christ as Savior, you and I who would like to think that, well, we've grown to some extent, at least in our walk with God, let me ask you this question. Let me ask myself this question. What Bible verse are you trying to memorize, to put into your memory banks today to continue the process of growing to become like Christ? The Bible says that if we hide God's word in our heart, that we'll have a real vantage point to not give in to sin. That's what Psalm 119 says. Well, I've discovered that even though I've grown in the Lord, I still have sin battles, so I still need more of God's word in me, and I want to become more like Christ. And I have a hankering in my soul that so do you. So let's take a verse of scripture, hide it in our soul, and let's continue to grow in Christ. Amen. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309 828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website, Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.